Do you miss your mom, Dee Dee? Yeah, I miss my mom. When you look back, do you think there are ways that this could have been handled differently? Absolutely, absolutely. I look at things um, in hindsight, and I realize that there were other options besides murder, but I was so sheltered that I couldn't I couldn't see them at the time. Gypsy Rose Blanchard has taken the whole world by storm. Seriously, since she's been out of prison these last eight months, she's all that anyone is talking about. She went from being in prison for her role in the murder of her mother to social media influencer to soon-to-be ex-wife of Ryan Anderson and the soon-to-be mom of a baby girl. But it also turns out that she's also about to be soon to be back in prison too. And she's so worried about it that she's allegedly been crying about the thought of going back to prison and serving up a new sentence while she's pregnant or giving birth in prison. So what's up with Gypsy Rose Blanchard and why is everyone talking about her going back to prison? They wanted me to send me back. They were gonna send me back. I'm so sorry. I didn't don't want First, if you don't know who Gypsy Rose Blanchard is, what, have you been living under a rock? Okay, so Gypsy's mom, Claudine Dee Dee Blanchard, allegedly lied about Gypsy having a lot of serious health conditions. Like she couldn't walk and had to use a wheelchair, take tons of medication, and have multiple surgeries. Gypsy says that the surgeries and the veritable pharmacy's worth of medication was all unnecessary, and that she was a victim of Munchausen syndrome by proxy. Basically, she says that her mom liked the attention she got from having a sick daughter, so she faked that Gypsy was sick. Abusing her physically, medically, giving her medication she didn't need, having her go through procedures that she didn't need, to the point where most of Gypsy's teeth are not even hers because of the medication that her mom was giving her that uh, she had no condition for. And it worked. The two said they were victims of Hurricane Katrina and they got help to move to Missouri from Louisiana in 2005. It was also a convenient excuse for why Gypsy no longer had medical files. Then in 2008, they actually got a home from Habitat for Humanity in Springfield, Missouri. They had it painted all pink and girly for Gypsy and installed a wheelchair ramp. They also got comp trips to events and venues like Disney World. Dee Dee started lying about Gypsy's age when she was a teenager and even changed the dates on her birth certificate to keep up the charade. Oh, very protective. Do you think she protected you? No, not in, in certain ways, yes. In other ways, no. Um, I think that she was very sick in her mind. In 2015, Gypsy got on a Christian dating site and got herself a boyfriend, Nicholas Godijan, who lived in Wisconsin, but Gypsy convinced him to come kill her mom, allegedly. Then they went back to his place in Wisconsin, where they were both arrested. He's still serving a life sentence, while Gypsy served seven years and then was released December 28, 2023. But new evidence has come out, and it looks like she lied about what went down with her mom, and it looks like she's going back to prison. Right around five days ago, people started noticing that CaseNet, Missouri's court record system for criminal cases, has been updated for Gypsy. And this, okay, so over here, if you click on these things over here, her actual case stops in 2015 now. It doesn't go all the way through to 2024. It no longer has the the um, parole officer that just re, uh, that just asked for it. It has no none of her parole terms, none of those things. And this right here, if you go under charges, judgments, and whatever, sentencings, this is showing up, and I've never seen this. Indeed, when you look up Gypsy's case now, there's an extra number tacked on the end, and it says there's a pending charge. The 01 at the end wasn't there before. And here you can see that the case in regards to Claudine Blanchard, Gypsy's mom. People are speculating that maybe new charges have been added. But other people say that when cases start getting yanked from CaseNet in Missouri, it means the feds took over and are investigating it. Skippity Dota has been posting about her thoughts on the matter, and she comes from an informed place. She was actually in prison with Gypsy. So um, it's been brought to my attention that Gypsy Rose's case is off CaseNet. Um, so I'm going to explain that a little bit. Typically when that happens, now, in case you're wondering why Skippity mentioned the whole privacy and being famous thing, it's because that's what Gypsy claims through her friend Bree. Bree did a live stream, and this is allegedly what Gypsy texted her and told her that her lawyer said about the issue. Sorry, felony cases are broken into two cases. Prior to the preliminary, 
preliminary and after the pre- prelim- preliminary hearing, what you're seeing is the prior to preliminary hearing. Once it gets past preliminary, they add the dash zero one to the case number, but it shows up as a separate case, a separate case, but it's really not. Anyways, the zero, the zero, blah, blah, the dash zero one is where the case is resolved. There, there is no legal reason it is not showing up. I'm wondering if the presiding judge increased the security level to stop the trolls from filing requests. The pending cause thing is what every pre-preliminary case says once the zero one is created. Somebody got in Bree's comments and said, it also happens when the feds pick up a case when they feel like the state did not do their job. I live in Missouri and know the laws here. She's going back. To which Bree replied, I think her lawyer would know about this. The person fired back, like the feds are going to tell her that they're investigating her. And that's a good point. Why would the feds actually tell her that they're looking into her and put all their cards on the table so soon? Flawless Nina said in the past that somebody made a formal request for Gypsy's deposition, too. I guys remember a couple of weeks ago when we saw this on Missouri CaseNet? This right here. This was someone requesting her deposition from court. Her specific deposition was what was being requested. Now, why would that be? On 8-7, which was this month, a record request from Amanda Moore was entered. Now, when you look up Amanda Moore, she came up as someone that handles federal and local cases that lives in Louisiana. There's also another Amanda Moore that is with probation and parole in the state of Missouri. Now, I truly believe that this is not by coincidence. I think what people fail to realize is the longer Gypsy has been out here is the more she has been acting crazy. This TikToker says she had an attorney friend look up the case number and he said this. Why are they looking at David Blanchard? I'm so sorry. I didn't Don't want be sorry. <laughs> is Gypsy Rose Blanchard under federal investigation or what exactly is going on with her court record? Now, if you're not a true crime junkie like me and you don't remember this case and haven't watched literally every documentary and movie about it that's out there, David Blanchard was a neighbor. See, what tipped the public off that Dee Dee was dead was that Gypsy and Nicholas got on Dee Dee's Facebook and made a post that said, the bitch is dead. So people called the cops and the cops came to do a welfare check. But they didn't have a warrant, so David, being an MVP of a neighbor, basically broke into their house and looked around for the cops. But he said he didn't see anyone there and he didn't see Dee Dee's body. Everybody looking at the case thought it was pretty sus that the neighbor didn't find Dee Dee's body at the time. But David said he knows why he didn't find the body, but that is information he cannot disclose at this time because of the ongoing investigation. Why are they looking into David after so long? They could be looking into Dee Dee's death again because her autopsy and the crime scene photos have been floating around the past few weeks. Recently, it's been discovered that Dee Dee was never diagnosed with Munchausen by proxy. And even worse, she didn't even meet the criteria to be diagnosed with it. Tisch's disorder, formally referred to as Munchausen syndrome, is categorized by the intentional falsification of physical and or mental signs and symptoms in oneself or in another individual for no obvious external gain or reward. 
The diagnosis for an individual falsifying illness of another person, like in this case, is factitious disorder imposed on another. People with factitious disorders intentionally produce or exaggerate symptoms, but can't control their behavior. The primary motive is to assume the sick role, not for personal gain, but due to a psychological need to be perceived as ill or injured. The DSM-5 uses this criteria to diagnose factitious disorder imposed on another. Now, Dee Dee meets those first two criteria. She definitely falsified symptoms and diseases and presented Gypsy as ill to others. But those second two criteria? No, she definitely benefited from it. They got a whole ass house out of it. Not to mention lots of stuff like free concerts and trips to Disney. Did you and your mother obtain any kind of advantage by you being in a wheelchair? Yes, sir. What kind of advantage did you obtain? Financial, um, attention, charity. Financial need money? Yes, sir. Did you obtain money as a result of you being in a wheelchair? Yes, sir. I uh, asked you why you obtained an advantage for being in a wheelchair. You said people gave you money. And I, I think my next question is why did they give you money? because they felt sorry for me. They believed the lie, they believed the fraud. And the last one, it's actually explained better by another disorder. It's a psychological term called malingering. It means when a person falsifies or exaggerates illnesses or injuries to get stuff or to get out of work or shirk responsibilities or to get attention. It's associated with lots of mental disorders. As it turns out, Gypsy actually was born with a disorder of her chromosomes. We found this out when Gypsy's medical documents were sent to Fancy from the Good Wives Network, and they were going to do a documentary, but something about that didn't go through. And that's no little condition. It can cause neurological disorders, heart and skeletal abnormalities, seizures, mental issues, developmental and motor issues, and more. So basically, Gypsy's entire defense has been a lie she really does have something that caused all of her medical and mental problems. The autopsy report has blown my mind too. Gypsy has said that Dee Dee took her nighttime medication and was asleep and kind of out of it when the murder went down. But the toxicology report determined that was a lie. But even more so that um, there are no pills in her stomach. No pills in her stomach. And she would have taken her nighttime medications before she went to sleep. Exactly. Someone with... And if there's food she... still in her stomach, the pills would have still been in her stomach as well. Dee Dee was stabbed 17 times, most of which were on her back. She was also stabbed in the head and neck, being almost decapitated. They go across her back from top to down, left to right. Some of the wounds were between 7 and 10 inches deep. So to say that this was a violent crime is beyond an understatement. The crime scene photos of Dee Dee were recently leaked and you can go look them up, but as someone who did go look them up, I highly suggest you just skip it. Let's just say that wound in her neck was deep enough that the investigator was able to lift it up like a flap and take a picture down in it. And I feel like now is a good time to tell you that you should like and subscribe to this channel because I'll go to great lengths to bring you quality tea even if it causes me psychological trauma. Some other stuff to note is that Dee Dee didn't have any defensive wounds and the wounds went top down, left to right, which indicates a right-handed perpetrator and Nick is left-handed. Oh, and he only admitted to stabbing her four times. Maybe he really didn't stab her 13 times in the back. There's a lot of stuff that way that makes people think Gypsy was more responsible than she let on. A lot of people aren't cool with Gypsy's and Nick's sentences either. Remember, he's still doing time for a life sentence. They say that this was all Gypsy's idea so that even if she wasn't the one to carry the act out, she should have had a harsher sentence. What other alternatives have you considered? Poison, arson, a gun. Why did you not consider poison? It was too hard to find an odorless, tasteless poison. What can you kill? I didn't believe I could do it. Could you explain what you mean by that? I don't like blood. I don't like the sight of blood. Frankly, I'm too squeamish. I just honestly didn't believe I could do it on my own. I supplied the knife. Where did you get the knife? I stole it from Walmart. Where did they get the gloves? I supplied them. 
Who paid for that trip? I did. Why did you pay for that trip? Again, I didn't think he had enough money. And how did you get money to him to come down on that trip? I stole money from my mother and I sent it to him via the mail. How did Nick know when to do this one? The time I spent that money. I told him. So out of her own mouth. Gypsy was very involved in this murder. It seems pretty convenient that now that the autopsy and the crime scene photos have leaked, now the feds are giving Gypsy the side eye. But to be fair, the full autopsy report wasn't even brought into court the first time. Gypsy posted an update two weeks ago that shows her ultrasound at 17 weeks. Yeah. So well. Gypsies drew in January. Now, if you don't know, there is a bit of baby daddy drama going on there. See, Gypsy's currently married to Ryan Anderson. They've said her divorce will go through in October, but I guess we'll see about that. She says the baby's with her boyfriend, Ken. But because it was conceived while she was married to Ryan, state law says that he'll be listed as a daddy on the birth certificate. Ryan and Gypsy broke up in March, and she allegedly conceived with Ken within a month of her breakup with Ryan. With the timeline being that close, there's definitely a question of paternity. To get Ken's name on the birth certificate, they have to get a DNA test with a 99.9% .9 paternity probability and all three parties have to sign the paternity agreement, or they have to finalize the divorce before the baby girl is born. But given that Ryan keeps skipping divorce hearings, that may not happen. So right now, it looks like Gypsy is going back to prison. She's allegedly being investigated by the feds and she's freaking out. Word is that she's been crying and worried that she'll go back to prison while she's pregnant, or that she might have to give birth in prison. And the kicker? We don't even know for sure who the baby daddy is. I could honestly go on for a while about the Ken Ryan drama, or how Gypsy's currently copyright striking content creators she doesn't like. So if you want more Gypsy content, be sure to tell us in the comments. But that's it for this video. What do you think? Do you think Gypsy will go back to prison? Do you think she's being investigated for fraud? Or is it all the new info on her mom's murder that's landed her in hot waters? Let me know below in the comments and I'll catch you in the next video.